So let's talk about waterboarding. I don't know much about waterboarding other than that apparently it's a torture method in which the victim is made to feel like they're drowning. Even though they're not drowning, they feel like it, and which seems pretty terrifying. And a friend of Nicole's tried it on themselves somehow and was like, it was quite an experience. <laughs> they like tried it in the shower. I don't even know how that's possible. But really, I don't want to talk about waterboarding. I want to talk about the difference between actually drowning and feeling like you're drowning. Now, there's a very real difference between the two, right? Feeling like you're drowning, but not actually drowning, is very different than drowning, because drowning actually ends your life, and feeling like you're drowning is just a horrible feeling. But for the person experiencing it, there's very little difference because you're terrified that you're going to drown, right? And I certainly have experienced this professionally from time to time, where I'm overwhelmed, I feel like there's so much going on, um, and that extends into, into life past work too. So many commitments, so many demands, and there's a feeling of how can I keep up? I feel like I'm drowning. The problem is for someone who feels like they're drowning, they will respond like they actually are drowning, which can make them drown, if that makes sense, right? And I think in a lot of cases, uh, you, me, the people around us, we're encumbered by so many things that we, we feel like we're drowning, we feel like we can't keep our head above water, and the way that we react to that actually makes it worse. So here are some of the things that I like to do when I feel like I am drowning professionally or in life, and um, maybe they can be helpful to you. One, I make a ton of lists. Um, I have a, a pretty solid system. I'm a big David Allen GTD fan. Um, but when, when I feel like I'm out of control, that's the time that I need to break things down because usually I've got a lot of plates that I'm spinning and it's all being kept in my head. And once I can make lists and figure out what needs to happen next for each of the things that I'm working on, it becomes more clear what the real priorities are and what small things I can do to move these big things forward. Because as long as I keep them as big things, they all seem impossible. Two, part one, uh, ask for help. So part one is consult with people who can be objective about your problems. Sometimes we feel like we're drowning because we've amplified the intensity of all the things that we're doing and someone else can look at them and say, oh, this isn't so bad. Here's what you need to do. Here's a critical path. Here is a way forward that you can't see because you are stuck in the middle of it. And so asking for to consult with somebody, asking to have like half an hour to talk through your problem with someone you trust can do tons to help clarify the areas in which you maybe are amplifying the feeling of drowning when you're not actually drowning. And number two, part two, is to actually ask for help. To find people who can lessen your workload, to find people who you can delegate to. Number three, identify your true north. Uh, whenever I get frustrated and I get overwhelmed, very often it's because I am involved or engaged in things that seem important but aren't necessarily getting me closer to what I want to accomplish, professionally, personally, whatever. And remembering what my priorities are, remembering what the things that I want to be about as a professional, as a, as a husband, as a father, all that kind of stuff, that really helps to remind me of when I'm overwhelmed by things, here's why I'm doing this, here's why this is important, or geez, this is not important at all. I'm, I'm totally tangled up in something that I shouldn't care about at all. Which leads me to four, give yourself permission to walk away. Maybe you shouldn't walk away, but when I am overwhelmed, I start to act like a victim. I start to act like everything happens to me, right? When I have an opportunity to happen to things. And, and sometimes just reminding yourself that you have the ability, that you have made choices to get yourself here and you can make choices to change your circumstances is a real powerful thing. It's very powerful for me. It's a good reminder for me. And so maybe that's helpful to you. Anyway, I do not recommend that you waterboard yourself in the shower. Um, but I, I do recognize that um, 
it can be easy to get confused about the difference between drowning and feeling like you're drowning. And that feeling is very powerful, but sometimes it's not accurate. Sometimes we feel like we are going to expire. We're not going to make it. When in reality, we're just going through a really, really tough thing that only feels like the end.